Thank you. Good evening, sir. Mr. Amit, kindly stop sharing your, your, your screen. Mr. Mohamed? Uh, okay. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Good to get you. Please carry on. Okay, thank you. You have 15, you have 15 minutes. 10 minutes presentation, 5 minute questions. Okay, sir. Um, good, good evening, faculty members, judges, and then ladies and gentlemen. My name is Richmond. I'm speaking from Ghana. And I'm offering Masters in Educational Technology. So my research topic is the impact of e-learning during the COVID-19 pandemic in Ghana. Um, I will be doing some introduction, then I will go to the research aim, objectives, significance, and then the rest will follow. So before the invention of the internet, there has been in an existing a structural educational system. So this was a distant learning or the adult education system. E-learning has its root in the distant learning education. And then this time learning or the adult education was mostly done by servicemen and women serving in the military on official duties overseas and could not attend physical classroom, but had ways to upgrade themselves through acquiring higher education certification. So traditionally using this was involved correspondent courses where students or learners corresponded with institutions through traditional mailing system. This method was called corresponding education. So um, the introduction of e-learning also revolutionized the concept of traditional distance learning by combining media, the World Wide Web, and then other web technologies. And then this systems or these processes harness the e-learning process making it attractive and then making it worldwide research shows that the similarities in corresponding or media proofing that there is no significant difference in the learning outcome of e-learning from that of face-to-face -face or the traditional classroom block educational method According to the UNESCO, their research in 2021, it shows that online learning has many benefits. So if you're able to understand it, it can help us, especially in Africa and then sub-Saharan Africa regions. If you're able to embrace it, it will help us in making education more modernized and then more qualitative. So my research aim is to evaluate the use of online learning and efforts by stakeholders towards online learning activities within the Ghana education ecosystem. And then my objective, that is the main objective of my research is to undertake a literature review identifying challenges faced by learners using the e-learning and to understand and to un undertake study on how learners use online le learning in schools and high institutions in Ghana to provide understanding on constraints or challenge in online learning in Ghana with reference from the study and literature reviews. So why, why this research, the significance of my research? Um, during the COVID-19, we saw that it hit us all globally. And then most institutions were shifting from their face-to-face -to, -face to online. So I, I thought it wise to 
look into it how it helped and then the challenges it came with it um in ghana scoping it to ghana like other african nations we face the inadequate of resources especially looking at um, technology wise and then um, the speed of our internet so in my research i also came across through the interview that most people or most institutions were having the same challenges you could see that through my literature review urban and backhand fish 2005 they talk about these same challenges with the african as a continent our technological challenges and then the fact that we don't have the internet speed that we need in order to make learning and then exchange of information very smooth so how does this research benefit my study i believe with my study of educational um, educational technology um, it is important to research on these variables which are very key or which will help us in the sense that if you want to pursue education you will need some technological know-how and for that matter researching on this was very key in my discipline or in my study of educational technology now in my literature review i came across or i came to realize that sermon use a certain five stages which helps in developing the e-learning process i'm going to buttress on it briefly so he talked about the fact that in order to harness or in order to use the e-learning field there are some five key factors that you would need the first stage was to assess and motivate online socialization which is the second stage the third stage was information exchange the fourth stage knowledge construction and then the fifth stage development so looking at the stages the first stage learners with the first stage which is assessing and motivation stage learners have access and an encouragement capability to enable them to use features of the e-learning environment and then with the socialization this stage helps learners to develop their own electronic identity or e-identity as an individual participant or as a group of participants so they over here they choose the kind of equipment or the kind of softwares and then devices that they will be using for the um, online study or the online search and then the third stage was the information exchange this is where we, we realize that from the first second and then th third stage people will be acquainted with how to use the technology and for that matter they will be ready to exchange information with colleagues and then their lecturers and other stakeholders and then the fourth stage was the knowledge construction where at this stage learners are already already familiarizing with <coughs> with their need and in complete understanding of the electronic communication process and then the last stage from the sermon stages is the development the development stage examines the skill set acquired by learners and es expect learners to be able to derive personal benefit to explore or integrate the use of virtual learning environments so there was a key problem with the sermons model so if students or if student is not successful in setting up the system then they will not be able to learn using the online system this was one of the challenges you realize that using the sermon model if people or if students are unable to set up the system it become very difficult to use the learning platform or to connect with other stakeholders so with the <coughs> with my research um i used four weeks to collect the data in ghana and then i did some write-ups on 
the research that I also made. And then with the data collection, I use the secondary data collection and then the primary as well. Uh, with the primary, I went to specific schools in the greater Accra and then Kumase regions. Um, I concentrated on schools like the CAF University, their nursing department, and then with Kumase, which is the Kumase Technical University, I focus on their uh, computer science students. Um, and then I also did some interview with the lecturers and then other stakeholders too. Apart from the fact that um, I, I involve these tertiary institutions, I had to also talk to some other schools, which were the uh, junior cycle and then the secondary cycle. Schools, uh, international schools, that, that is how we call them here. Um, schools like the St. Gregory Catholic School and then other junior high and then senior high schools within Kumase and then the Greater Accra. So, uh, with the sampling, uh, mostly I focused on some key students within the CAF University and then the Kumasi Technical University. S these are some of the response that I had. Um, concerning the implementation on the online during the uh, pandemic or the lockdown, we got to a point where there was a total lockdown. Um, we, I got to realize that most of the students, 60% were new to the e-learning platforms and then 40% were familiar. This is for schools like the CAF University and then the Kumasi Technical. I, in fact, I grouped them with the CAF, since the CAF, I focus on the nursing department and then the Kumasi Technical University, I focus on the computer science students. Uh, mostly, most of the students in the computer department were familiar with the tools and then they had the internet connections. Those who were not having laptops were using other devices like their phones and then tablets. Even most of them were also using the school labs in all their research works or in submitting their assignments. But uh, with the CAF University, most of the students, they did complain on the fact that um, the internet connection and then the fact that they were not having laptops and then other smart devices that were going to aid them in their use of the online or the e-learning platforms. <laughs> so with, with the response, um, as I said earlier, almost 60% from um, CAF University um, were not familiar with online platforms. Some, the forty percent who were also familiar, um, did know about some specific portals like the Google Classroom, Zoom, and then WhatsApp and then Mail. These were the main pa channels that they were using to communicate or to send information to their lecturers and then other colleagues. So, um, with the lecturers too. The one challenge that um, I came to realize was the fact that the internet access or the internet connection that they were using for all the e-learning were being provided by themselves. The institutions did not provide it. So in conclusion, and my, recommend, in my recommendation on this findings, <clears throat> as the current state on internet connectivity in high institutions and basic schools in Ghana and across the continent, can be considered as insufficient and very expensive and also poor manage. That is um, referencing Galclo 20, 2006, um, paragraph 3. It is not surprising that internet being used in education has some limitations in these institutions or universities. Based on findings from our research shows that despite recommendations and claims from lecturers, of these two institutions explaining that the e-learning infrastructure are well developed. Most universities and schools across the country seems to lack these incentives. Even though most students in these institutions 
have access to personal computers. Research and data gathered shows that almost 80% of students, especially learners, or Mr. Presenter, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Presenter, sir, time up. Okay, sir. Thank you. Question and recommendations? Hello. Hi. What's your is it Amakwa or Richard? Richmond Amakwa. Okay, Richmond, thanks very much for your presentation. Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, you are doing comparison between face-to-face -face and e-learning, not so? Yes, please. I, I was looking at the impact the, during the COVID-19 period. Yeah. And in your analysis, it seems you have come to conclusion that e-learning is more efficient than face-to-face. -face. And also, you have said that e-learning has got more advantage than face-to-face. -face. And in your um, data collection, you have said that you visited several high school and the like, whether it's grammar schools or secondary schools. Yes, please. My question is, was your methodology of data collection similar from those decisions which they are using e-learning and those are using face-to-face? -face? Okay, so um, my research focused on e-learning. But then the reason why I was doing some comparison, uh, most students prefer the face-to-face. -face. But then I was looking at the fact that um, looking at the outcome or the efficiency um the face-to-face -face and the e-learning um basically they all give the same outcomes if you look at how lecturers or teachers do teach with the face-to-face -face, the same thing happens with the e-learning or the online uh, that was what um, i was trying to um conclude on and then basically the questions or the interview was it was centered on the e-learning or the online because during the COVID-19 most of the students um, couldn't go to the classroom so they, they, there was a need for some other means in order to communicate with lectures of which initially most of the schools were not doing that okay no thanks good thanks very much good luck thank Richard you, Another question and recommendation? So Jonathan, I've got a question you can ask. Jonathan, do you have a question? Jonathan, please, you need to un unmute yourself before I we can hear you. Okay. Hello. So I'm going to turn to my presentation. Uh, not a question, not a question, no question. You have no question? For the sake of time, let's go for the for the next presenter. Victor Tichiu. Are you ready? Yeah, you. yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. Good luck. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mr. Amankwa is still sharing. Oh, sorry, let, let me let me put it up. Sorry. Sorry, uh, stop sharing now. Sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. 